Hi, I'm Kelsey from roughandtumblefarmhouse.com and today we are going to be talking about shiitake mushrooms. So my neighbors reached out the other day and said that we just had a really nice rain and they had a bumper crop of shiitake mushrooms. So they invited me over to come and pick as many as I wanted. So I got a whole huge basket full of these mushrooms. They're so delicious and there are a couple of things you can do with them. And I know a lot of times with mushrooms, people at first, they just want to know how do I clean them? How do I store them? And how do I keep them for later? If you're lucky enough that you get a big bumper crop of shiitakes, what, is, what are some good ways to preserve those mushrooms? So first, shiitakes are a mushroom. They aren't native to the United States. They come from Japan originally. They come from the shi tree, and shiitake basically just means mushroom from the shi tree. They are really delicious just for culinary purposes. They do have definitely some benefits in terms of vitamins, especially B vitamins. They have anywhere from around 20 to 28% of your daily needs for some different B vitamins. And they also do have some medicinal properties. There aren't a ton of studies out there that I could find to talk about in terms of those, but some people believe that they are good for anti-inflammatory things, having some uh, cancer cell fighting benefits, all kinds of things like that. So um, again, I don't have a ton of research to back that up, but those are some kind of more folk beliefs that people have around shiitake mushrooms. So first let's talk about how we are going to clean our mushrooms to use them. So here we have a mushroom that I'm going to get cleaned up and I'm just going to take a damp paper towel and I'm just going to wipe off any little bits of dirt from the outside of the mushroom. Now, people say you shouldn't wash mushrooms. You absolutely can if they are whole. At Cook's Illustrated, they did a test and they washed whole mushrooms and found they really didn't absorb much moisture. But if you are trying to clean sliced mushrooms, those you don't want to wash because they will absorb everything just like a sponge. So you can see we've got our stem here, which is going to be kind of a woody stem, not something you want to eat. So we're just going to pull it out like that and I'll toss it over in the compost pile. Our pig doesn't really like mushrooms, so she will not be having those. And then here you can see that this is kind of brown, doesn't look very appetizing or like a healthy part of the mushroom. So I'm just going to remove that as well. There you go. And if you want to brush off any other dirt, you can. And so there we have a mushroom that is ready to be prepared to cook or be prepared to be frozen or dehydrated or however you feel like you want to preserve your mushroom. Okay, so now that we have looked at how to properly clean a mushroom, let's look at how we can keep them fresh if we're not going to be eating 15 pounds of mushrooms in one sitting. Uh, let's look at the best ways to store them. Now there is some disagreement about the best ways to store your mushrooms. Some people say it has to be paper bags, other people say it has to be plastic. I've tried both, I honestly don't see much of a difference between the two. Paper bags seem to work just fine and so do plastic bags. Other people say that you really need to stuff a paper towel in the bag to help absorb excess moisture. I haven't done that before and I've had mushrooms stay good for up to about a week in the refrigerator. So if you are going to be storing them and you have a paper or plastic bag, you're just going to stick them in the bag and store them. One thing that people do recommend is to remove all the stems before you store them. So if you have the time and can actually properly clean the mushrooms like we looked at before you store them, that's a good idea. But at the very least, if you don't have time for that, just pop the stems off and then place them inside your paper bag and then just kind of loosely crumple the top like that and then store it in the refrigerator. Again, that'll be good for about a week. Now, if you're gonna be using your mushrooms right away, you can just leave them on your countertop, that's perfectly fine, or you can just set them in the fridge. If you're getting mushrooms from the store, just keep storing them in the container that they are in. It's important too that you do not wash your mushrooms way in advance of using them, and I, as I talked about, you can rinse them under cool water if they're whole, but don't do it until just before you're going to use them because they can absorb that moisture, and then when you go to cook them, especially if you're trying to brown them and get them good and crispy, they're really not going to crisp up very well or cook up very well if they've got a lot of excess moisture hanging around. So let's take a look at those preservation methods. The first one we're going to look at is how to dehydrate your shiitake mushrooms. Slicing up your mushroom really is it however thick you want it to be. If you're going to be dehydrating them, about a quarter inch thickness is usually uh, kind of standard. And again, you can do these in little chunks. You can do them in strips like I'm doing, however you want for your purposes. Now 
Now to dehydrate our mushrooms, we are just going to be putting them on our dehydrator trays here. And we are going to be dehydrating them between 110 and 120 degrees. And they only take a few hours. I'd say at about four hours, you want to start checking your mushrooms. Just open up your dehydrator, pull a mushroom out, and set it aside to let it cool. Because if you test it when it's still warm, it's not going to give you really an accurate uh, view of whether or not it's actually dried or not. So let it cool a little bit, and then try and just snap your mushroom in half. And if it just snaps really clean and crisp, then you are good to go. So it can take anywhere from about four to eight hours depending on the moisture in the mushrooms and the humidity in your home. Okay, now that we've got the dehydrator running, we are now going to be freezing some of our mushrooms. So the first steps of the process are totally the same. Clean all your mushrooms, snap those stems off, slice them up about a quarter inch slices, and then we are gonna go put them over on the stove. All right, let's get these mushrooms cooking. So if you're gonna be freezing your mushrooms, you don't wanna just freeze them as they are because unfortunately they don't reconstitute very well and they are going to be pretty mushy. So. What I'm doing is I'm just gonna saute them and then I'm going to freeze them after that. So you can saute your mushrooms in whatever you like. You can use coconut oil, you can use olive oil. I happen to just really like butter. So we are gonna be uh, just gently sauteing them in butter and you wanna make sure you get the whole pan pretty well coated. As you can see, I am firing on all cylinders here because I have a lot of mushrooms to do and it's really important when you are browning or kind of caramelizing mushrooms that you do not crowd them too much on your pan because then you are never going to get that nice caramelization that you were looking for. So I went ahead and prepared the mushrooms in two different ways. I have some that are chopped up and some that are in strips depending on what I'm going to be using them for later. So I'm just going to add these to our pans. Now I'm just going to toss them a little bit in the butter and that'll kind of give me an idea if I need to add a little more butter or not because these mushrooms really will soak it up. So I'm probably going to add just another little knob of butter to each of these pans because it looks like as much as I put in there, it's still not quite enough. Alright, so if we look and see, they are getting nice and brown on the other side. So that means it's time to start flipping them over and we'll just let them brown for another four minutes or so. Don't be too stressed if you can't get them flipped perfectly, especially if you chop them like this. It's a little more difficult to get a good flip for every single piece, so don't panic. They'll be just fine. Now another really important part of this process is to make sure that you're pulling out a little delicious golden morsels of this and sampling it as you go. Alright, so these are looking done. So what I have done is I just took a baking sheet, lined it with a little bit of parchment paper, and I'm just going to scoop out our mushrooms onto our parchment paper here. And then once I get them all on here, I'm just going to spread them out like this. And then I'm going to let them cool for a little while, just till they're about room temperature. And then I'm going to pop this whole thing in the freezer. You can see here that the mushrooms have all frozen. And freezing them this way 
uh, in the freezer like this before throwing them in a bag keeps them nice and loose so that way if you want to just toss them in your eggs in the morning or just add a little bit to a dish they come out really easily just in individual pieces so I'm just gonna go ahead and fill up a just a freezer bag like this make sure you label and date I always think I'm gonna remember what something is or when I put it in a bag and then I find myself months later being like what is this and when did I put this in here so make sure you label and date and just store in the freezer and they should keep up to at least six months And that's all I do, really, really simple, and that way you'll have mushrooms you can snack on all winter long. Now, I will tell you that when you are going to use them for cooking, make sure that you put them right onto a hot pan. Don't let them thaw first, because then they'll get kind of mushy. So just take them from frozen directly into the pan. They're really great mixed in with eggs. The dehydrated mushrooms are really good added to soups, so you really you can explore and just try different ways of eating your preserved mushrooms. And two, I also forgot to mention when you're making them, if you want to add a little bit of salt and pepper, you can. I normally don't, I just kind of season them once I am recooking them later. And this method too should work for any type of mushroom you have, not just shiitakes. So thanks very much for tuning in. Make sure you check down in the description box. I will have a link to the blog post. Every time I post a video when I get done, I think, oh shoot, I forgot to mention this or that. So it's always a good idea to check the blog post to get the full details of the process. Always check back here at our channel. We post new videos every single week about farming, family, food, and fortitude here at our Rough and Tumble Farmhouse.